Herz für die Ehe, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. We have today the Feast of St. Clement, uh, one of the earliest of uh, popes. He was the third successor after St. Peter. Uh, so he was the fourth, the fourth pope. Um, and also today uh, we have uh, the commemoration of St. Felicitas, as well as I'd like to mention a little bit about uh, Blessed Miguel Pro. He's not in the traditional calendar, uh, but as we know, one of the Mexican martyrs. Um, so before we get to uh, St. Clement, our saint for today, uh, St. Felicitas was the mother of the seven holy brothers. And they, their feast day is on July 10th. I think that was their, the day of their death. And these were seven brothers who were killed one after another right in front of their mother, uh, who was St. Felicitas. And she, rather than plead for the lives of her sons, exhorted them rather to die a holy death rather than to apostatize from the faith. And so, as I mentioned, they, their feast day is uh, the July 10th when they were martyred, and then her feast day is today uh, when she herself was martyred. A great example there of uh, getting your priorities straight, right? It's not this life which is important, it's the next life. And so, St. Felicitas, a great example there. Uh, similarly, is going to be Blessed Miguel Pro. He was uh, one of the Mexican martyrs. Uh, he was born in 1891, and he was killed in 1927, uh, so um, not even 40 years old. Um, and he was one of the ones where in, in 1911, he, was, uh, he, let, he entered the seminary to study. He ended up going to California a few years later, and then to Spain uh, to escape the, the Masonic persecution of the church. Um, but after he was ordained a priest, uh, he came back to Mexico to help out his persecuted um, uh, br brothers, you know, and sisters in Christ. And he was crazy. Uh, he was like the ecclesiastical Zorro. He would, he would um, disguise himself as a beggar in poor uh, neighborhoods, disguise himself as a businessman in rich neighborhoods. He would go to people's houses. He would be baptizing, holding marriages, saying mass. Um, and Catholics, they would be arrested, put in prison. And while they were waiting death, he would dress up as a policeman and go in and give them uh, confession and Holy Communion. Uh, so he was just was absolutely fearless. Uh, but he himself would, would be betrayed uh, after just about a year of, of this work. Uh, he was betrayed and brought to, um, uh, you know, imprisoned and executed almost immediately. Uh, but what, what an incredible uh, example of just courage, but also the faith, right? It's martyrs like this, and we'll we hear this with St. Clement as well. Um, forgiveness of, their, of the people executing them. Right? That's always the sign of the, the Catholic martyrs versus anybody else. You, know, you always have martyrs for uh, any religion, any cause that they're willing to die for. Uh, but it's only the Catholic martyrs that will display all the virtues, both courage uh, and humility and firmness, but also charity, love for their, for their uh, people who are killing them. You don't see that in other religions. They'll curse them, they'll condemn them, they'll rail, they'll rant, they'll like, you know, die spitting at their enemies. You never find that with the Catholic martyrs. And so on the day of his execution, November 23rd, today in 1927, uh, Father Miguel Pro blessed the soldiers of the firing squad as he walked into the courtyard. He knelt down and prayed and then faced the soldiers with a crucifix in one hand and a rosary in the others, holding his arms out in the form of a cross. And he shouted at the soldiers, may God have mercy on you. May God bless you with all my heart. I forgive my enemies. Viva Cristo Rey. It's the, the famous uh, line we know from Miguel Pro. Uh, so his feast day is today um, in the Novus Ordo calendar, and as I've said before, um, we're missing out, right? In the traditional calendar, we're missing these saints. We don't have Padre Pio, you know, we don't have Miguel Pro, um, so there's some, uh, you know, I like to mention them when I can. Uh, but for today, Clement, uh, St. Clement I, uh, he's particularly important because of the witness that he gives to uh, the primacy of the papacy. Right, um, the, the Bishop of Rome as being uh, the first in all the churches, all the bishops, uh, the, the primacy of the bishop, um, uh, the successor of St. Peter. So he was, as I mentioned, the fourth pope, the third successor from St. Peter uh, from the year 88 to about 99. And he was ordained by St. Peter himself. He was ordained a bishop. And in the canon of the mass, um, if, you, if you see in your missiles, uh, we, I pray uh, uh, for Linus, Cletus, uh, Clement, and Sixtus, right? That's one of the things the priest prays. This is that Clement in there. Linus, Cletus, and Linus and Cletus were the two popes before him. And the pope before that was St. Peter. And St. Peter, in fact, wrote the canon of the mass. The canon of the mass that we say, uh, that's St. Peter. 
he composed that. So um, we have all the, the first four popes right there mentioned in the canon of the Mass. So um, Pope Clement is, had a friendship, but he was ordained by St. Peter. He was friends with St. Paul uh, because actually the, the um, epistle that was read at the Mass was Philippians, uh, from Philippians chapter 4. And in it, St. Paul mentions that, uh, you know, greet my fellow laborer in the vineyard, uh, Clement. So that, that is the Pope here. So uh, St. Clement is the first of those men that we call the apostolic fathers, those men in the church who had significant contact with the apostles themselves. And they provide us that critical link between Christ, uh, his own hand-pointed successors, and then the rest of history. So we have that, right? You have Christ, you have the apostles, and you have everybody else. Well, that link, that very first link from the apostles to everybody else is the apostolic fathers, and St. Clement is uh, the first of them. Now, he's left us a very important work known as the uh, Epistle of St. Clement. And this is something that he wrote to the churches in Corinth. And this is what I mentioned. This is the, um, uh, you know, support, the earliest support for papal supremacy. Now, there had been some trouble there in Corinth uh, between the priests and the clergy and, and the laypersons and so on. And so uh, the, the, the lay people were saying that their clergy were not uh, sufficiently holy and that they needed to be deposed and other people who were worthy of being bishops put in their place. Uh, and so Clement wrote his epistle to them and said, you can't do this, right? It doesn't matter how bad or how evil the bishops are. The, once those bishops are appointed, uh, it's no, it's nobody, nobody else can get rid of them. You, you can't decide that they're not holy enough and get rid of them. You absolutely cannot do that. Um, you, have to, um, you have to abide by the ecclesiastical structure. And uh, he says this from the letter. This is the, the passage from that, that epistle to, of St. Clement. He says, Our apostles knew through our Lord Jesus Christ that there would be strife over those named to the office of bishop. For this cause, therefore, um, having received complete foreknowledge, they appointed the aforesaid persons, and afterward they have given a law, so that upon their death other approved men should succeed to their ministration. Uh, essentially, what St. Saint, what Saint Clement said was, uh, the apostles knew this. They appointed their own successors, and they also established a structure by which uh, successors should continue to be appointed. He said they established a law, right, meaning regulations and so on. And so we don't, have the, we don't have the ability to circumvent that because the apostles were ordained by Christ. Just as you can't, as Christ said, there will come pseudo-prophets, uh, you know, who, who were not called. Uh, and they are, they are liars and thieves. Uh, if you can't trace your appointment back to Christ, you don't have authority in the church, right? And that's the problem with every schismatic sect, right? They cut them, the, themselves off from Christ because they cut themselves off from the successors. And so we have here this, um, this and this is, this is, again, this is written before the first century was even over. This is in the year between 88 and 99. That's when this epistle was written. So already, um, and, and Pope Clement, it wasn't like he was asked by Corinth to arbitrate there was trouble there, and he issued an order. He sent them something and said, uh, basically, knock it off. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm the Pope, listen to me. So that is, that is uh, we could say, that, that early, early proof of papal supremacy. Now, he has uh, quite the martyrdom, uh, as we'll see, um, and he even writes in, his, um, in the epistle, he says, we were prevented from writing to you earlier because of great difficulties here in Rome. He was talking about the persecution of the emperor. Um, there was the emperor Trajan and then Domitian. And uh, he suffered into both of them. So he was eventually, he was um, uh, arrested and exiled to a harsh prison camp uh, shortly after writing this letter. And so as usual, he, he began, he didn't give up the faith. He just continued preaching ca and catechizing other prisoners. And then um, once there was, uh, while there, right, these prisoners, there was a shortage of uh, water. Uh, it was very difficult for them. The, the, the nearest well was six miles away, so that to go get it and bring it back just so people could have enough to drink was, was very difficult. Uh, so St. Clement kneels down in prayer, and he looks up upon a hill, and he sees a lamb uh, digging with its feet in the, in the ground. So he goes up to the spot where he'd seen the lamb, and he drives his pickaxe into the ground, and then a spring of water, fresh water, flows out uh, for, the, um, for the other prisoners. And so this, this miracle converted hundreds and hundreds of, 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 of uh, prisoners. And so the guards uh, didn't like that too much. 
right? The fact that he was converting all these prisoners. So they say that he, if he liked water, he was going to get it. So they took him to the ocean and tied an anchor around his neck, uh, sailed out a short way, and then uh, threw him overboard. And thus he was drowned. Um, but it didn't end there, right? Um, the faithful often went to the spot to, to venerate St. Clement. And it was recounted once that there was this uh, mysterious low tide, a very low tide that receded back, um, I think nearly, it was like nearly a mile it receded back. Um, and they saw out there in, in the, in the, on the spot of the shore, they'd been venerating um, his, his martyrdom. Uh, they saw a little shrine at the bottom of the ocean. So they, they walked out there in this low tide and they found uh, in this little shrine, uh, it was built on the sea floor and it contained uh, the bones of St. Clement and an anchor. And so these relics were uh, retrieved and they were kept in a uh, nearby monastery. Uh, but then um, one of the other saints later came and brought it to the Basilica uh, in Rome, which is now called uh, St. Clement's uh, Basilica. Uh, so, um, you know, this is, this is it from, from the very beginning, from the fourth pope in Rome to uh, St. Felicitas and her seven sons to Blessed Miguel Pro, just, you know, barely not even a hundred years ago, we have that continuing uh, heart of Christ present in the faithful, present in the church. It inspires everyone, right? Anyone who truly has the heart of Christ uh, uh, to, to evangelize, to preach the truth, to try to convert people, not, not through the sword, not through violence, not through censure, not through cancel culture, uh, but by love, right? By example. And even when we are attacked, even when we are uh, ridiculed, uh, we respond with that heart of Christ, right? The love of Christ. Just what he showed on the cross, it's our uh, uh, duty and our privilege uh, to show that to everybody else. Uh, so whether it's martyrdom, right, the ultimate sacrifice of our life, or anything less than martyrdom, right, getting cut off in traffic, right, we, what we do is we want to show the heart of Christ, right, we don't want to, to give in to our passions, uh, but to resist them, that's where we're going to find our happiness. Uh, so let's pray for the intercession uh, of these martyrs today, uh, Blessed Miguel Pro, St. Felicitas, St. Clement, uh, that we may always do that, always correspond with God's grace, so that love grows more and more, so that it, it can be seen uh, by more and more people. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.